as a body, as a board body, should we be aware of that? I'm not as concerned with that. I, I have people that take care of it, so again, it isn't my concern, but if you have a concern for it, that's something you should seek the superintendent's advice on. I've been well aware of what has been going on uh, as the president last year. I would get a, a note that this is what we're doing and because I usually sign those in that memo went on to the rest of the board. So again, over the past year, I know that it's been, uh, we've been informed quite a bit on the, the, the suit that I know of, of the back and forth and I'm disgusted by it, but I can't help it. Do we move on from attorney fees or? You know, if real quick, maybe if perhaps, and again, it's it's up to the discretion of the board, but after the next meeting, maybe we can go into executive session afterwards. Instead of sitting here and talking about it for a half hour, why we go into executive session, you give us a quick update, and we move on. That's my thoughts. Okay. Um, go ahead and move on, Bill. Thanks. Okay. Um, Expenditure decreases. Uh, healthcare participation, there's been a decline in that, 377,000. On top of that, we are self insured for our dental and vision. We've, we're seeing a statistically um, statistical decline right around $253,000. Um, as I mentioned in the property tax, uh, revenue is going down, so is the expenditure. So this is the offsetting 100,000. Special Education Center program costs, as I was talking about, uh, our students transferring over or being part of the center program, some of the cost of $281,000 is transferred over to that along with um, the revenue that's going over there. And if you net all the other items on, um, if remember that's a $100 million uh, budget. So if you net all the individual small minor changes here or there um, throughout the budget, um, it's $171,000. So this, this Presentation will be online. Um, people can um, log into the website and um, pull it up, see it. So some people like to see the uh, um, verbiage on it, and you have that. But we also present the same information, a little bit more summarized, uh, more in an Excel uh, document form. And you can see here what total revenues are: one million seven eighty four. The bulk of that is um, out of that. The bulk of that money is uh, the one point three million dollar in MIPSERS. The breakdown in local revenues, uh, decline of 456,000. Again, all of this is just, it's everything that I just talked about, just more in a, a summarized form. Um, and then you get into the state revenues of the 2.3 million, and then the intermediate and the federal programs uh, decline of uh, 101. On the expenditure side, again, this is all the details of everything that we just talked about of 1,674,928. So let's get down to uh, the fund balance and where we're at. You can see the adjustments, the net adjustments. Uh, uh, we come out to a net surplus of uh, 109,806. We had an original budget um, ending fund balance of 4,474. So that puts us at 4.5, almost 4.6 million. But remember, we had a $528,000 uh, better than expected results of, uh, from 1617. That puts us at the 5112808 uh, mark. Um, let me put a note out there. When we talked about this, all, these, uh, all this information at the study session, uh, we did have a $12,988 uh, surplus. Uh, that's where, and now it's 109806 after we went through every line item that's out there. A little bit of history on the fund balance. Back in 12, 13, we had a $5 million fund balance, and then we dipped all the way in 13, 14 down to a million dollars. This is kind of the success, not the kind of success, this is the success story of this district. Since 13, 14, we've been on a tear rebuilding the fund balance. We've gone from a million dollars to the next year, two million, then three million, then to five million. Uh, during that period of time, uh, we have uh, given the employees the 1% back that they took a pay cut in during uh, the difficult times uh, with, through the state of Michigan's uh, funding. And then we also, all MEA members received an $800 bonus. In addition to that, this year we've also added a 1.91% uh, raise on top of everything that I just uh, talked about. Um, so we've done all this during this period of time uh, and we're still growing the fund balance. 
as of right now, let me go through here. As of right now, uh, Danielle and I are looking at the bottom line. When you look at um, um, we're nine months into the fiscal year, we have a contingency line in there, $500,000 to protect the district and more importantly, the board. Um, as of right now, uh, we don't see the, that we're going to use that. So it's very likely that we'll be in at five million six. I'm not going to promise that, but I'm going to go out there and just say that as of right now, uh, we're trending towards that, uh, not using that contingency. So we've reached the 5% fund balance and uh, we've exceeded the Michigan Department of Treasury's, Treasury's uh, requirement. Uh, we did that in 16-17, we're doing it in 17-18. Uh, if you want to look at a perspective of better, um, better results in 1617 plus this year's surplus, we're growing the fund balance 638,000 from what we originally uh, budgeted for this year. Questions? Uh, it's not a question. I do need to take some time to digest the revised budget again. Sure. Really appreciate the study session. Um, I was able to take a lot of comprehensive notes then as well. and. Can piece it all together in my head. Um, incredible amount of transparency here. Um, but when you said we got to this 5% fund balance and, and um, possibly even even slightly better than that, depending on the, the, the contingency needs, um, but there really should be balloons and streamers and band music playing. Um, just in, in terms of magnitude, in one year from 2012-2013 to 2013-2014, we lost 80% of our fund balance in one year. 80% that had to then be made up methodically. Um, it, it was an all hands on deck effort for the, all all key stakeholders in the sixth district contributed to the success of that. Um, but that was very hard work and uh, to be able to be in this place uh, is, is just uh, astounding. And to be able to hold sacred the work that's going on in the classrooms, um, all the more so. So um, I just wanna commend the entire district. It, it's, uh, it was an all hands on deck effort. There was nobody that was left behind in this effort in making this happen, but specifically, um, Bill, you and your team for spearheading that effort and, uh, and doing all of the painstaking work on all, every single line item of every single budget in every category over and over and over again to figure out where we could save and where we could cut and where we, how we could hold the classroom sacred and still recover that 80% that we lost so precipitously and, and, um, and needed to make up, so. Just, again, can't thank you enough. Well, I really appreciate that. And it was a sacrifice of everybody. And um, what's most appreciated is that the, the board has had to make some very tough choices to get us where we're at. And they've been very, very supportive of our recommendations and getting us to where we need to be. Any other questions? Mary? Um, awesome to have, especially to have the possible extra 500,000 to go in there. It's wonderful. Um, as we know, when the auditor came, he told us that 10% or more would be ideal. So we're heading that direction, correct? Like, so we're gonna keep going. And these incremental steps, I'm just worried that we're, we're gonna be okay with 5% and not um, continue to, to go higher as our auditor had suggested. So, okay, so that's, I think I, uh, have made that point many times that I want to make sure that we're, I'm hoping that we continue to go. Um, I think 5% is you know, not on the radar anymore with the state, but it's a precarious place to be. Show, and I think history right there in 2013, we were at 5% and all of a sudden, bam, you know, we went, we went down um, to the point where we were in crisis. So um, if we continue to work on that, and that was our whole point, Member Torres, Member Piggott and I's point of having budget meetings to discuss options um, about what we could do. Options just like we have with the bond issue, um, options about this and you know, what if we, what if we did those options? Um, and, and I guess I, I have notes again later to talk about it, but it, it's very um, pointed here that I think our next meeting that we, just, that we all um, made for the budget is April, 26 or something, like over a month away. And then you just had said when you started this progress or presentation that it's April, May that you make the budget and then we vote in June. So we're gonna be learning about the budget, studying it and probably presented, um, presented something because that's been past practice. So I'm hoping that we get presented options that 
can grow the fund balance um, and, and do different things. Give raise, you know, possibly give raises, grow fund balance, cuts to um, excessive spending part of the district, all kinds of things, and give us give us options. Um, that's what I'm hoping. Any other questions? Sure, John Paul. I just want to recognize the information um, that uh, you know, I feel good about this presentation. Um, felt we were informed. Uh, we had a. Uh, a community meeting, I guess you would call it, that was a uh, study session that didn't happen. Um, but uh, we were able to get a lot of information uh, just kind of on the projections we're looking at. We're still looking at per pupil funding and, and uh, what we could or, or would get. Um, having a study session where we're all able to sit in a room and talk about the numbers and the money. Um, I'm happy to see the fund balance grow. It looks great. Um, good work. Um, good good thank job. Thank I think we're headed in the right direction here. Definitely. I have no time. Sure. I forgot. Right. Okay. I meant to um, ask in the agenda to have a spot about asking follow up questions with our last board meeting that I had um, emailed you. And mm -hmm. I I'm sorry. I didn't understand that question. I i don't know what I was looking at the kids and I didn't add it. I didn't ask to have it physically or actually added to the agenda. It so, went. what did you want to talk about? Well, I can just ask him now that he's here, but the, I had follow-up questions to the last meeting. About the budget? We're on the budget. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why you didn't need budget. to change the agenda because the budget's on the agenda. Well, I forgot to ask, so yeah. So here we are. Um, all right. So <clears throat> one of the questions that I wanted to just clarify <clears throat> in that meeting, and um, it was frustrating to me that that meeting wasn't televised. It was put um, over at Prairie, and um, only the people that were in the room saw you know, heard, heard the answers about what happened. And I think that's, I think our next budget meeting on April 26th, I hope that it's televised um, and here at this facility. Um, okay, there's a couple things. So, <clears throat> um, okay, the data that I talked about with you that day at our meeting came from the transparency buttons on the website. And one of the things that um, stood out when I looked at it and the transparency button is very easy to get to and savvy parents I'm sure are looking at that data and comparing schools. It's literally just a few clicks. Um, I had noted at that meeting that um, the, under the operating expenditures tab for last year um, under instructional expenditures we spent 57.7 percent of our budget while neighboring districts spent more. And we're a $100 million budget, or district, so 57.7 is $57 million. Um, Huron Valley, is, they're about $100 million too, and they spent 61%, so almost 4% more in instructional expenditures. And the whole thing about the transparency tabs, it's supposed to be consistent from district to district so you can compare. So it's not apples and oranges and different things. So, um, so when you look at that, Anybody would look at that and go, hmm. Um, Wild Lake spends 67%, and this is a percentage of budget, so it's not dollar amount. So um, it's over 10% more in Wild Lake. West Bloomfield, 62. Um, Clarkson, 66. Holly, 62. And the only district that's around us um, where kids might choose to go um, is Pontiac, and that's at 46.9. So when I look at it, and we talked about it that night, um, it's a percent of budget and that I believe shows our priority of focus, like where we spend our, where we choose to spend our money. And um, interestingly, the same document for Waterford, but the year before, um, in 15-16, we were higher in that category. We, had, we spent 59% in the instruction. Um, and then, so looking at where the money shifted or went to, it shifted um, into a category called central and other support services and it went that went from 3.6 up to 6.4 million so a 2.8 million increase away from instruction into central um, you had thought at the time bill that but you wanted to check that it was due to a one-time only expense for the senior center write-off so it's just verifying that that is indeed what um, it was and you had sent me an email that it was but my question is, can you explain what that means? I was thinking about it later. Um, what does a one-time write-off for a senior center mean? It means uh, the senior center is an organization that has a, um, 
we have a receive we had a receivable on our books to receive money from them they're not able to pay it so I took it off the books and I think that's an important point too is during this period of time when you look at these fund balances here that I was able to get the or we were able to get the balance sheet in much better shape so we wrote off the senior center receivable it's not collectible um, 40 years ago I mean, uh, the great majority of it 40 years ago when they established the senior center they they asked the senior center to um, pay them back after one year's expenditures so we had this receivable in the books okay well that's we wrote that off okay so when that occurred so we caught them up we got them yep. back on track of where they're yep. at so um, when that occurred that was a, a public board meeting decision to, to make that expense or how did that expense decision get made no that's proper accounting um, with the gap rules uh, generally accepted accounting principles okay so is is it how is that how it looks where it came that, ha that money had to come from somewhere and it came from correct came from what well we, we wrote it off we put it it had to go into central there's no other place to put that okay. uh, um, cost okay so it wasn't brought up at a public meeting that we were going to be doing that it just got no. done mm -hmm. okay and that huge shift of money is I just want to just that's, uh, that's I don't mean to interrupt I'll go back to your question but the audit our yo and yo our audit team is aware of this oh correct yes and absolutely no, that this we, is the place yeah. that it should have been if you're gonna write off that kind of ex correct correct I mean when you when you analyze what a receivable is and you determine if it's not collectible anymore you need to write it off that's not a board decision that's that's finance I understand you're yep. the only department that we pay forty some thousand dollars to make sure you're doing your job. Correct. Right. Correct. So. Correct. Right. I just want to understand it and not find that it's not. I just wanted to know what it was. It just had a one-time senior center write-off, and I wanted. To I, I do like to point out, though, I know that you've compared us against districts, and in that study session, though, every district has a different demographic, and I mentioned before, during that study session, that. Um, here on Valley, for example, they don't have the same special ed count. We're fourth <laughs> highest in special ed. Uh, we're we're number one in um, at-risk funding we are third in federal funding so they have different demographics and when you quote those percentages in different districts it's not apples to apples even though we record the information as apples to apples where the actual demographics will change what those percentages are um, in the case of um, uh, um, Wald Lake for example they're a hold harmless district they have probably Fifteen hundred dollars more per student than we do. I, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. So they're eighty-three hundred dollars. You know, and so they're able to, under Proposal A law, they're able to tax the local um, uh, homeowner more money to support their schools, and they put that all into instruction. They don't have the same demographics nor the same funding that we do. And when you talk about federal programs and uh, at-risk dollars and so forth, those items don't. Um, they don't necessarily automatically go into the classroom their support and that's why the support costs are more um, their their supplemental costs or their supplemental support for our students they're not necessarily sometimes they are but not necessarily always in the classroom so when you have those costs for those grants and we're not going to turn those grants down just to change the percentage we're going to keep funding um, that support for those kids and not turn down these grants because they need it Okay. Well, I'm just saying that if you're a parent and you're looking on that list, that's the impression that you get. So if we could provide, um, you know, have this type of questioning so people can hear why it's different, then that's, I think, important. Okay, I, I'm, again, I'm going to tell you, I told you this multiple times, just because I ask about it, it doesn't, it's not an insult. It doesn't mean that I don't think you're doing your job. But when I went on the transparency page, it was just right there in front of me. So if I'm wondering it, I've got to believe that other people are wondering it too. So I just wanted to ask. And if that's an answer, that, that that's the answer. But um, all right. So then another, uh, another question that I had that night um, was about a, 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 the personnel expenditures. We spent more, way more. Um, millions more in, in an area so I asked about it again another thing it's on the transparency website you go to the identical identical pages on other districts and we just spent a lot more in a certain segment and you answered back and told me that um, 
there, it was about an energy bond principal and interest payment. And you said most districts do not participate in the energy bond program and the final bond payment will be in 2022. Correct. Okay, so how much was, um, I guess, how, it was $2,041,000. Um, how much was senior center? How much is energy bond? How much more, how much in energy bond do we have to keep paying until 2022? Uh, the energy bond's probably gonna go about 1.1 uh, to $1.2 million. Uh, that's general fund. It's energy, it's uh, principal payments of this year in particular that you were asking about. Uh, that was the 16, 17 data that you were looking at was 845,000. And then the interest payment was 270,000. And then um, those payments will continue through 2022 and then that'll free up the general fund for about million one to million two. Um, the energy bonds was a program we entered into in 07. Um, we were starting in the state of Michigan, we we're starting to get into the crisis of um, the housing crisis throughout the state. Uh, we did it, we, we entered in much earlier than the nation really. Um, in fact, for most of the 2000s, we didn't ever get out of the recession even though the, other the rest of the country enjoyed it. Um, but our property values started to decline at that time and we had the, the 2003 uh, bond issue was $100 million. Um, we issued um, several million uh, dollars and we did the high school renovations with the PACs, the, or the performing arts centers, pool and fitness centers and the um, uh, the gyms uh, and, and did re renovations like that. But what ended up happening is we went for a very long period of time where you couldn't issue bonds because the property values had dropped. So if you entered into what's called an energy bond uh, program where you can use general fund dollars, issue bonds, and then you can make improvements, much needed improvements, because we had to get uh, some of our boilers and the pumps, uh, the boiler pumps uh, throughout the building and then um, a lot of lighting improvements. And so that's what all this money was uh, spent on. Um, so here we are, you know, um, 11 years later, we're still paying on it, but, and we'll, we'll, con we'll continue to pay that. And for the most part at the time, um, uh, most of this, even though we did very needed capital improvements, a lot of the energy cost offsets at the time, uh, what you would pay in utility bills helped to pay for this because there was energy savings with the new boilers and new pumps and the lighting. Okay, so senior center's done one time and then, so senior center was about a million or a little bit less than a million? Okay. Yeah, a little less than, yeah, 900. Okay. Okay, thank you. John Paul, do you have questions? Yeah, okay. Real quick, if I sure. can. Yep. Um, and I just want to real quick, and I know people, it's hot in here and I apologize, um, but I want to piggyback on what Ms. Sutherland said mm -hmm. that, um, you know, since I've been on this board, it seems like we've cut, 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 and we got down at times really to a, a tough level, and it was tough for everybody. Um, but I always, I always think of this song from my daughter in elementary high school musical, and we're all in this together, and it's in my head now, but I look at your team in the administration, you know, you're sitting there working hard, working extra hours, coming up with how are we gonna stay above water and start raising this, and you're bringing it to us and we're making the tough decisions that you know sometimes people are upset about but we do it because we know we need to and then we have our employees who took cut after cut after cut to keep this district afloat and make things work and then we had our community who passed the bond issue overwhelmingly you know other districts were getting their bond issue defeated and ours was passed by a wide margin and so I, I look at that and think we're all in this together. We all need to pat each other on the back, every single one of us, from us to you, to staff, to community, everybody. Um, we're, we're moving on up and we're going in a great direction and, and I think we kind of hit the bottom and things are going up and I, I think everybody deserves a big pat on the back and a big applause. I appreciate that. <laughs> I was going to end up putting Mr. Pickett to call my <laughs> Do you want me to sing that? No, all I appreciate together? it. No. <laughs> so next we move to audience comments on action items. I have no green cards on action items. Is there anyone that would like to address the board on any action item?
move to the approval of the minutes. Secretary Pickett. Uh, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the February 15th, 2018 <coughs> regular meeting, February 21st, 2018 study session, and the February 21st, 2018 closed session. I so move. Support. Moved by Secretary Pickett, supported by Member Sutherland. Which one Any this? questions or comments? I have a quick question. Sure. Mr. Um, the tw February 21st closed session, I believe there were only three members present for that. I'm not sure that that constitutes a meeting, or maybe it does. This was right, right before the study session? Sorry. Okay. Yeah. No, you're right. I, I saw that, and I was actually, I was looking at it the night, and I think she, yeah, Ms. Southern was We correct. did end up with four, I think. We just, when we, when we voted to go into closed session, we only had three of us. We never so voted. So we determined yeah. it would just be a discussion. Okay. So I, I don't know if it matters if, if we. Well, it does know. matter. I mean, this is inaccurate, yeah. We didn't have a closed session. So how would you like it to read? Because when you want to start the regular meeting, we had that op the study session. When did we start it? I. I wasn't. I didn't take the minutes, but I know that when we we didn't well, I'm vote. I'm just looking for an opinion for those of yeah. three of us that were there. Three of us started, right? It was, there was by three time of us, we right. actually got to six o'clock. I think it just five us there. I think just what Miss Sutherland said and and Miss Bargan. It's just I don't I don't know if these closed session that they're not they're not accurate. You know, actually, I, it is accurate now because it says it happened at five thirty-seven, and there were four of us at that point. So I think it actually is. Oh yeah, accurate. the time got corrected, right? Yep. But it does have roll call. Yeah, and you weren't, yeah, Joan you weren't wasn't there at a roll call. call. Right. And we I didn't did. even do a roll call because there was, well, we did, did, we did and we then there was no, enough, pe there so wasn't we enough. It right. wasn't going to be a closed session. And I said I when I went in, so I don't, <clears throat> I don't know. All right, so, so does it matter if we have a closed then. session? I, I don't know. I don't know legally that's, I, I don't know. I just, I'm, you know, pointing out that it's, it wasn't correct, but how we handle it, I don't know. I don't want a legal opinion. No, I don't need to. No, you're right. <laughs> and then, so, um, I don't even have that. Is it it's separate? Here's it's, 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 oh, it's a that's right, separate, because yeah. Megan keeps them separate. Right. So we're just going to go with the study session minutes that started at um, 5.35. And we're okay with the adjourning at 7.55? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll just strike the closed session minutes from... Okay. Yeah. So do I need I, to make a motion to modify that since we already have a motion on the table? Uh, you, you can modify your motion. Well, okay. I modify that the motion we take out the February 21st, 2018 closed session. I so move. Support. All those in striking the... Is it 18th or is it February 21st? I said, didn't I say 21st, 2018? Maybe you did. Maybe I did. I don't know. So we're going to strike the February 21st, 2018 closed session. There you go. Any questions, comments? We're going to approve February 15th regular meeting and February well, 21st study session. I want to add something to the, eight, the, the, the minutes of the 18th, of the regular meeting on the 15th, sorry. Um, okay, okay, let, how about, okay, I'm going yeah. to vote well, to get put this one off, then we'll yeah. come back to you because you can just talk the Perfect. other. So all those in favor of striking the closed session? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Mary, were you a yes? I didn't see your yeah, hand. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Six zero. Okay. So you have a, there's a motion to approve the regular meeting and the study session. Do I need also, to remake that motion? Go ahead. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the February 15th, 2018 regular meeting. No, I want to add to them. That's what I was saying. I want to add to the. As soon as we get it on the, on, oh, for a vote, you can. Sorry. And the February 21st, 2018 study session. I so move. Support. We've been supported. Any comments, Mary? Yes. Um, let's see. I want to see. You did a regular meeting minutes. I looked at them and noticed. Um, where's the board comment part? In business. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, in the in the discussion items on the um, page, are you on a page? Yep, it, it is. Well, page four of the minutes. Okay. It's under board, under dis, under discussion items board of education reports. First paragraph, mine. It says member Barcon spoke regarding board discussion on bylaws and policies. The meeting 
held on February 8th, the location change of the study session scheduled on February 21st and presented a PowerPoint regarding hiring practices outlined in policies. And I would like it to, it wasn't just hiring practice, it was a, that I believe that we are violating our policies with our, um, we are violating our, our policies regarding uh, the hiring So practices. you understand that all your comments are actually part of the minutes verbatim? If someone looked this up, it doesn't say that I had a concern about a violation. No, so. I go to the bottom of it and I click on the link that shows me the video. I'd like this to say that it says violation, that I had it be a violation. Otherwise, people will just think I talked about the policies. And, then, and my whole purpose is that we have $7 million of unchecked spending and hiring and I would like to have that be reflected in the minutes. I would not like that assertion reflected in the minutes. Anyone else like to comment on the minutes? For, for those in the audience who don't realize our minutes, we do broadcast these minutes then the full the full every word I say is on video and recorded. Obviously, Megan summarizes these for the board. These are our minutes, so all those in favor of approving the minutes? Opposed? Motion, motion passes 5-1. Uh, accounts payable for February 2018. Treasurer Sutherland. Accounts payable for February 2017-18. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the check and electronic funds transfer register for the month of February 2017-18 as listed on pages 1 through 153 and fifth third account statement pages 1 through, th one through 3. Invoices have been processed by accounts payable and purchasing per requisition submitted by various departments and all are within the prescribed budget allocations. I so move. Support. Moved by Member Sutherland, supported by Member Petrusha. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Motion passes 6-0. Financial uh, statement? Yes. The Board of Education is in receipt of the statement of revenues and expenditures for the eight months ended February 2018. Thank you. <clears throat> New business, Secretary Pickett. Superintendent's <coughs> recommendation 75-17-18, retirements, resignations, leave of absence, expirations. It is recommended that the Board of Education accept the resignations and retirements presented. I so move. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any questions or comments? All those in um, favor? Well, oh, sure. I have a question. So it's, um, that was 11A? 11A. 11A, okay. 11A1. So on here. 11A1. 11A1, okay. So on here, because um, I'm just trying to find out the distinction why we get we have four teachers on here, um, their effective date, their, where they're um, going to be teaching, or if they resigned or retirement or whatever, and we learn about them. And then on the next page, we're, we have tons of detail too. So I'm wondering, why, why do we do this? Why do you write this up for us? Exactly, okay, thank you. Any other questions? No. Nope. All those in favor? Motion passes five, uh, six zero. Superintendent's recommendation 76-17-18 teaching contract changes and appointments. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the teaching contract changes and appointments presented for the 2017-2018 school year. I so move. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any questions or comments? I have a question. Um, same thing. This is teaching contract changes appointments and we have teachers on here that um, we have who they're replacing, very detailed. We have um, people who are going from 100% to 110% getting a pay increase of 10%. We have that on here and that is on here. Uh, you do all this work and present it to us because it's in the policy, correct? All right, as I presented a few board meetings ago, um, the exact same wording is in the policy for support staff, and we do not do that. Um, they've, become, they've become blue book employees and become invisible to us. Why is it that the policy for the support staff is not followed, but the exact same wording for the policy for professional staff is followed? I've been following past practice, 
of the board for uh, presenting administrators and certified personnel. Okay. They're not certified personnel. I right, but it doesn't that. matter in terms of our policies if you read it. And that's what, I know Dr. Wunderlich had said that to, to us as a board, that past practice of breaking, the, of not following policy is the reason why we don't follow it today. And I don't think I could get away with that as, as an employee and well, people. Well, board policy you need to direct to the board. I mean, so well, I'm, not, I'm, she doesn't control board policy. Well, <laughs> but she should be following board policy and doing the same exact practice for support staff. And so. The board doesn't do it for support staff. But it's our policy to do so. It's also our policy that the superintendent's in charge of the district. And we give him the authority to. But it's in his contract that he has to follow board policy. Okay. Right? I, and so because of not doing this, we have seven over $7 million of unchecked hiring spending. And clearly you keep track of even sports staff in this way. You'd have to as an HR director to keep track of who's hired where. Um, so I guess I'm very bothered that we do not do that for support staff. We know that we just learned from the superintendent that he gave a raise to a custodian and promoted him and we don't know how much the raise was. We don't know where it came from because he wasn't a contract, you know, the, the past practice didn't do it. But I'm saying that as a board, we need to stop that and have past practice or have our current policies be followed. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, one right here. Sure. On, the, um, on just the, the prior page, there's a couple of um, retirements and they're effective later in the year. I, it's all right, it'll be quick. Um, and then there's two that are resignations, uh, effective March 2nd, February 22nd, but then I don't see anybody replacing them on the next page. Why would that be? Uh, well, first of all, the retirements are ones effective in June 28th. Well, no, not those two. Those okay. are I'm sorry. All right. Uh, for the, the resignation, yeah. I do believe the one is on the second page is for it? Oh. Sean Brown. Where it says Sean Brown, yeah. right in front right. of me. Yep. Yep. And the other one was a lead. Perfect. Thanks. Yep. Before you, Clark, there was a concern about uh, somebody getting a 10% raise. It was uh, regarding an increase um, from second, a 10-year contract. Can you explain why they get the extra 10 percent? That's for an overage for um, they are teaching additional class during their conference period. So that's a certain percentage of their day. Which is followed by the teacher's contract. Yes. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Mary, I didn't no, I that. was I was in favor. I just got it up late. Motion passes 6-0. Superintendent's recommendation 77-17-18 resolution National School Breakfast Week. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following resolution proclaiming the week of March 5th through the 9th, 2018 as National School Breakfast Week, encouraging all residents to become aware and concerned about their children's and their own nutrition habits in hope of achievement of a more healthful citizenry for today and the future. I so move. Support. Been moved and supported. I just want to point out that this was the week of March 9th, 5th through 9th, which would have been our last board meeting, but it certainly it's important that we recognize our nutritional and food service staff, and so that's why we're still voting on this. Joan? I think it would, um, they are not only amongst the best in the state, but they are among the best in the nation, and they have been awarded many times as such. So it is not a little thing for us to acknowledge and show our immense appreciation for the work that they do every single day. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Superintendent's recommendation 78-17-18, resolution National Library Week. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following resolution proclaiming the week of April 8th through the 14th, 2018 as National Library Week, encouraging all residents to visit and explore what's new at your library and engage with your librarians. I so move. Support. Been moved and supported. Any comments, questions? Jump off. I'd just like to encourage the community to actually get out to the libraries and see all the the innovations and the, the things that are happening, um, you know, there's areas for children to, to read books at, uh, with their parents. 
Um, you can actually rent DVDs. Uh, you can get audio books, uh, all kinds of things. And um, I think it's one of these gems in our community that I think people really over the past five to six years when we started to see the economy go down, people were utilizing the library more. And people really started to realize what a gem it was. Library membership actually went up in our community. And it stayed strong. Um, so this is a resolution, and it's symbolic of, of sorts. But I would encourage everybody to, to get out there and, and, and go to their library. We have a, a wonderful library here in Waterford with a lot of resources. And the kids love it. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Superintendent's recommendation 79-17-18, Michigan Department of Transportation Performance and Indemnification Resolution. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the attached performance and identification resolution required by the Michigan Department of Transportation. I so move. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any questions? Any comments? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Superintendent's recommendation 80-17-18, Mott High School Spanish Trip to Costa Rica. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the Mott High School Spanish Class Trip to Costa Rica, March 28th through April 5th, 2019, as presented. Approval would be rescinded if the area to be visited is issued a travel warning. I so move. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Consideration of certain purchases, Treasurer Sutherland. Superintendent's recommendation 81-1718, contract award bid package 18-03, Mason Middle School renovations and Mott High School HVAC upgrades. It is recommended that the Board of Education award contracts for bid package 18-03 on the following summary of bids for Mason Middle School renovations and Waterford Mott High School HVAC upgrades. Total award package is in the amount of $6,320,972. The funding source is our 2016 bond series two. I so move. Support. Been moved and supported. Any comments or questions? Thank oh, you to our community. Absolutely, thank, thank you. you. Thank you to our community. Especially when you look at the stuff it is, and sometimes they don't see it when we're finished, but it's a uh, creates a great education facility. So all those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Superintendent's recommendation 82-17-18, contract award T2 video surveillance and cabling infrastructure. It is recommended that the Board of Education award a contract for video surveillance and cabling infrastructure to AMCOM. The total award package awarded is $567,605. The funding source is the 2016 bond series two, and I so move. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any comments or questions? Patricia? Uh, <clears throat> Bill, I see that we've, uh, Barton Mello has made a recommendation of these companies. That's something a little bit new. I know there, there are new construction people, or, or do I just not remember well, they them do. helping out with the, they're the uh, they're the construction managers, so yeah, they they're I've been including we we always get a recommendation okay. from our construction managers. Just that I've been including that to go through the details so that you have uh, more. That they it more isn't just you looking at cement and iron and stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, repeat that. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> have, have we used these uh, contractors before? That we, are getting recommended. Yeah, we've dealt with uh, many of them, and Bart Mel has dealt with all of them. So. Okay, thank you. I always get a question after we buy cameras about why are we putting cameras and it's a fact of life that we need to keep our facilities safe. We've been doing that for well over 10 or 15 years and this we work very closely with all the expert safety experts and our local law enforcement and it's just really enhancement to trying to keep our buildings as safe as we can. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Superintendent's recommendation 83-1718. Contract award, asbestos removal, Haviland and Houghton Elementary and Mason Middle School. It is recommended that the Board of Education award contracts for the asbestos removal at Haviland and Houghton Elementary and Mason Middle School to Trust Thermal Abatement Incorporated. 
Bid number one for Haviland and Houghton in the amount of $97,000. Bid number two for Mason Middle School in the amount of $102,000 with a total bid award of $199,000. The funding source for this is again the 2016 Bond Series 2 and I so move. Support. Been moved and supported. Any comments or questions? Rob? Again, this, have we used this company before? Yes. Uh, They've, they've done the asbestos removal extensively in the district and they know our buildings inside and out. So they certainly, you can see just how competitive they've been. They're much lower than everybody else. Because again, at them at uh, 199 and I have one here for over a million. Uh, yeah. so I just want to make sure they're going to get it all. Yeah, just <laughs> it's just their experience in our buildings. Okay. You know, I want to, I want to add to that uh, Nova uh, Environmental, they, um, they run uh, air sampling throughout the entire process, every hour. So we have an oversight company over this company to make sure they're doing their job. So if they're not going to do halfway or say, oh, it's all covered, we, we are checking to make sure that it is, that, it is and done, they aren't just saying they did it. Yes, and, the, uh, and that they're following the, um, the necessary safety protocols to make sure that nothing gets airborne. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Does that cost for NOVA come to the board? Is that included in this bed package or is that a separate? It's a consulting uh, fee. Uh, um, Less than the $23,000, I'm assuming. Project, well, not necessarily, it's just it's consulting. So um, in this case, it's the same as uh, when we did French Associates or um, pick the uh, construction manager. Okay, so that's not something that we have to approve because it's no. determined to be consulting. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? All those in favor? Motion passes 6 0. Discussion items. Yay, spring, spring break, April 2nd through 6th. I like your optimism, John. With a Good Friday observed on March 30th. Uh, so there'll be no board meeting schedule on April 5th. We'll have a celebration of learning on uh, Scholastic Art Awards. We we'll have information on the Waterford Academic Achievement Endorsement, information on the Waterford Reads. We will take action on bid packs on transportation site and remodeling improvements, Riverside roof emplacement, uh, roof replacement at Covert and Kettering, and we'll also take action on the revised 2017-18 budget. Are there any Board of Education reports? Um, so I had an opportunity uh, to go to the rescheduled uh, collaborative study presentation that they had Oakland had at Oakland schools uh, it was uh, just this past week and very informative uh, information again talking about the cost of what it is to educate a student uh, what the numbers show or the study shows is that the number is about nine thousand five hundred and ninety dollars which would show that our school district uh, is underfunded per pupil at the state level um, that number is raw and as we saw in the presentation by Dr. Wunderlich I believe it was at the last board meeting. It, it does not include monies for transportation, uh, for ESL, uh, does not count for, uh, for poverty levels. Um, the cost uh, of educating a preschooler is about $14,000, $14,500. And really what the, the collaborative study shows is that the current funding system that we have uh, at the state level is out of date. Um, it's about 25 years old. It's very cookie cutter, and it doesn't account for the differences that we see in districts. Um, every district is unique. Um, so really what we look, at, look for is for adequate and equitable funding for our districts. So as I said before, what the collaborative study has done, and it's given us a roadmap, um, and school board members were in attendance. It was school board members with the Oakland County School Board Association that were at the presentation that I was at. And we were really encouraged to use the study as a roadmap to contact our legislators, to lobby our legislators, to uh, inform our community that there is more monies that are needed for our school districts. And in particular, it's very important to Waterford kids, to Waterford students. So if we want to actually have an opportunity to implement some really good positive change and really help the kids of our community, uh, we should be lobbying our legislators for additional fundings and per pupil cost for kids and for school districts like ours. 
Um, I also had an opportunity to attend the um, Oakland County Reads event that was actually canceled. Um, so we've had a number of snow days and a number of things that have been canceled. But um, I just happened to actually drive by, knowing that it was canceled. I was, I was a guest reader, my daughter and I, my four-year-old. And uh, she was really excited to see Wilbert the Wombat and all of the people from the Waterford schools. So she was remembering uh, last year, Wilbert the Wombat was the star of the show. And uh, she kept telling me, Dad, can we, can we just drive by? Can we just drive by? Kept telling her, I said, no, we've got to go to school. I said, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to happen today. So I drove by, because I'm a parent and I cave. So, and when we drove by, to our surprise, we saw a school bus in, in the little loop there. So we pulled in, and I said, I thought it was canceled. And so we walked in, and as soon as we walked in, uh, the person that was there with Oakland School said, well, we got two guest readers right here. So we got a, a, a whole bus full of kindergartners that just came in from uh, Clarenceville, I believe it was. Um, so I said, let's do this. So I called a friend uh, to get another guest reader over there. So we had us and then some of the uh, personnel from Oakland Schools and uh, a bus full of kindergartners uh, spent two hours doing some, some reading and some activities, and um, it was a whole lot of fun. So I think really uh, the moral of the story is, is that uh, you, know, you, you just never know what can happen, you know, what kind of fun you can have. Uh, and, and it just happened to work out. Um, I'm hoping that they reschedule it uh, because it is a, a great event um, that really promotes reading, and it happened to be on Dr. Seuss's birthday. Um, and I, I hope that they reschedule it this month, but I'm not sure. I haven't heard any word uh, that they have. Um, and lastly, I wanted to make a comment about National Walkout Day uh, for our students. Um, I have been following the stories on uh, the mass shootings and what happened in Parkdale very closely. As a school board member, I think all of us have to an extent. We've been people have reached out to us in the community. We're reading articles about it. Uh, we're, we're you know, seeing posts on Facebook and things of that matter. Uh, Keith, uh, I was in contact with him several times yesterday. Uh, he informed me of the, what was happening in the school district and we took precautionary me measures. And I'm especially proud of the fact that um, we allowed the students to do what they wanted to do. If they wanted to partake in uh, a peaceful protest, uh, they had the opportunity to do that. And we provided them safety and precaution to do that. If they didn't want to, we didn't begrudge them. They had every opportunity to stay in school and, and not partake in it. And I think one of the beauties of it was, um, and I talked with you know, our superintendent about this yesterday, this was an educational opportunity for our kids. You know, we're making something good out of at least a tragedy, that there's this opportunity for kids to learn a, a firsthand real life world experience in, in civics and social studies uh, in, in the political process uh, where you stand on a particular issue. So I just want to accommodate the, uh, or, or really uh, praise the um, Waterford School District for the efforts that, that we took um, in keeping our kids safe, whether they wanted to partake in the National Walkout Day or they did not. Thank you. Thank you. Bob? Yep. Um, April 25th, uh, is the Waterford Youth Assistance Recognition Night. I don't know if Grant is here. He's the mm -hmm. president. If you're going to say something about it, too, maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> but in any event, it is coming up April 25th. Um, it is a great night to recognize any students, kids from our community who have gone kind of above and beyond and did some great things, whether it's, it's volunteering, being part of clubs. Um, they get awards, they get certificates. It's a really neat thing. I, I believe they still have a few days left to get those nominations in. Yes? Tomorrow is the deadline. Tomorrow is the deadline. They accept them on a fax machine. So I would imagine if we walk in the office on Monday and they're in the fax machine. You'll still do it. To know when, whether you made it 5 o'clock deadline or not. There you go. But it, it's a great <laughs> night for some great kids to be recognized. And I really encourage if you know a neighbor or a student or, or a friend's friend or something that has done some, some nice volunteer work or great things, nominate them and let them be kind of um, get some awards, get some recognition for their work. Um, they certainly deserve it. And then um, real quick, I want to personally say thank you to a few people at Kettering. Um, the principal, Ms. Cooper, Noreen Lentz, who's the office 
secretary, the, I think she does a ton she there at Kettering. The she runs the whole building. Um, and then uh, the counselor, I can never think of his name, but. Ryan Moore. Ryan Moore, that's it, thank you. Um, but last Monday evening, uh, my daughter, she fell at dance, she <laughs> tore her meniscus, her knee is all messed up. Um, she's out of dance. That next morning was actually, I'm gonna be a bragging dad here a little bit, the picture for the Select 50 that she was to me. voted to be a part of, and she really wanted to be a part of that picture. And I know another few parents out here whose son is in that as well. Um, you know, you get to be a part of the Select 50 one time in your life. It's, it's a cool thing. And she wanted desperately to go, but she was on crutches in a wheelchair. Her leg was in this huge brace straight out. She couldn't move. And I talked with Ms. Cooper, and she said, if you can get her here, we'll take her the rest of the way. So we got her there in a car in a back seat, and when we pulled up, uh, they came out in the freezing cold, and it was snowing with a wheelchair. They helped actually lift her up to get her in the wheelchair. As they got her in, probably four or five kids that were part of that group came up and helped push the wheelchair. They got her up to where the group was going to be. The kids were helping her out. They got her in there in the middle so her brace wasn't shown. They were kind of holding her up from the side and from the back. And so she got to be in that picture. And it just, I, I can't say thank you enough to all of those that helped because again, to some it might seem minor, but to her, to us, it was a huge honor for her to be a part of that. And, and it's, you know, you get that picture and part of that group one time and one time only in your life. So I really want to say thank you to those who helped getting her in there and making her be available to be in that photo. It, it means the world to, to her and I know to my wife and I. So thank you. And I saw the photo and you never know that she has a torn meniscus no, in the photo. No, so. exactly. Any other board reports, Mary? Um, <clears throat> all right, I just want to, uh, knowing that this is our budget season and how um, hard Member Torres, Piggott and I worked to get some additional discussion about the budget, um, we did re a request or express our request to explore various options within the budget. Um, for example, what if we didn't cut the 12 teachers that are slated to be reduced through retirement attrition coming up? What if we reduced in another area, such as central office? Um, why are reductions in staff always at the building level during student loss? Like, why does that have to happen? Can we explore different options? 